Good. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, great to be with all of you, and I'm uh, delighted to be joined by our Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs Rebecca Tepper, our Commissioner Elizabeth Mahoney of the Department of Energy Resources, as we make a really important announcement today. Okay. The bottom line is, Massachusetts, we need more power. We need to generate more power to be able to do what we need to do. We have one of two ways we're going to generate that power. We can do that by continuing with fossil fuels, which we know cause a lot of harm to our health, to our environment, and contribute to climate change. Or we can go in the direction of renewables and clean energy. That is something that we as an administration support. It is something required by law, by our legislature, in order for us to meet the goals that we have established. And Massachusetts has led and will continue to lead in this area. So consistent with that, today I am really proud to be able to announce that we are taking a historic step forward towards energy independence cleaner air and transformation of our economy. We're here uh, to announce that we are making New England's first coordinated multi-state procurement of offshore wind. Uh, we're going big. Massachusetts is selecting nearly 2,700 megawatts of offshore wind from three major projects, New England Wind 1, South Coast Wind, and Vineyard Wind 2. This selection is New England and Massachusetts largest offshore wind selection to date. Here's what it means. It means that 1.4 million more homes in Massachusetts will soon be powered with clean renewable energy. It means thousands of jobs, good union jobs will be created. It means significant investments in job training, ratepayer relief, and local vendors in our communities. In the face of climate change and a rapidly evolving global economy, Massachusetts will continue to be a leader in the offshore wind industry. And the world will look to New England for the future of clean energy. These projects will help create a stronger economy, massive economic development, and importantly, lower electricity costs for our residents and our businesses. Already, we've continued to invest in the building blocks of this industry. You see that we've expanded the New Bedford Marine Commerce Terminal. We also supported the Wind Technology Center, which is the first facility of its kind in the country, testing blades. This year, the federal government chose the University of Massachusetts Amherst, its Wind Energy Center, to be the center, the national center of excellence for research and development of wind power, which shows Massachusetts leadership in this industry. Last month, we were awarded $389 million by the U.S. Department of Energy to upgrade our grid with our New England neighbors for clean power. And next week, we'll be continuing to build on and strengthen our collaborations, not just with states, but with our Canadian provinces as we host the New England Governors and Eastern Canada Premier's annual conference, a conference that will focus on clean energy and offshore wind. What we do today is make an investment in our competitiveness, our economic growth, and in our future. I've spent the last year and a half, you know, talking to a lot of climate tech companies. Massachusetts is going to be the global hub for clean energy and climate technology. Because nowhere on earth can you find the collection of innovators, of R&D, of infrastructure, along with investment to get things done and built out in the way that we can here in Massachusetts. Offshore wind is going to unlock opportunities for workers, for families, and for our future. And for that reason, we've also bolstered our workforce development programs statewide so that everybody will have a chance to participate because we're going to need the workforce for this industry. Importantly, each of the three agreements, um, each of the three projects that we announced today intend to use project labor agreements, which is great. This is going to make sure that we have good paying jobs, high quality results, and pathways into clean energy careers for more residents. It's an importantly nice announcement to be able to make as we conclude this Labor Day week. 
I want to thank the workers, the labor leaders, the communities, and the advocates who brought us to this point. I want to thank Commissioner Mahoney and her team at DOER uh, for all the work that they have done. And this is the first time that the state has overseen the selection process. They did an excellent job. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Gov. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. It's really great to be with all of you, and thank you, Governor, and frankly, all of our teammates here in Energy and Environmental Affairs for their hard work, their deep expertise, and their unprecedented collaboration. This was a lot of work getting to this point, so it's an exciting day. This historic offshore wind selection is an important step toward fully establishing our regional offshore wind industry and ultimately transitioning to a more prosperous clean energy economy. Our coalition of states is rising to meet the challenges and sees the tremendous economic and environmental opportunities on the other side. Fundamentally, these opportunities presented by offshore wind are also about strengthening communities. We have historic seaports up and down the coast, many of which have hosted infrastructure for the fossil fuel industry for decades, including New Bedford, Somerset, and my hometown in Salem. These seaports are being reborn and revitalized now as hubs in the clean energy economy. It's a wonderful historic development to see these important assets not sitting on the sideline, but really helping refuel their economy. A few weeks ago, we were in Salem, breaking ground in our second offshore wind port. It's being built on the site of a, formal, a former fossil fuel power plant in an environmental justice community. It was once known as one of the filthy five in Massachusetts, the coal-fired power plant in Salem. From that project alone, the neighborhood will go from being burdened by coal pollution, coal piles, to benefiting from a multi-million dollar investment, providing good jobs and careers. Students in Salem Public Schools will be able to do job training on the very equipment being used to build wind turbines. And that is happening not just in Salem, but in several communities, New Bedford and others. It's something that we've been working on for many years when I was mayor, because a community affected for so many years by pollution, we should want and desire for that community to have a sustainable, healthy investment in their children's future. And that's exactly what's happening as we think about the work ahead. We saw the promise on the horizon through offshore wind, and this administration is seizing it. We're making the promise of clean energy a reality, not only for Salem, but for communities up and down the coast. We're going to continue to see this industry grow, not just in Massachusetts, but throughout uh, our coastal waters and all across our state in this New England region. It's a great day for those communities from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New England, and America's clean energy future. If you think about it, we're using the power of wind off the coast to help ensure we're growing a strong economy, contributing to fossil-free future, helping ensure we're building a stronger community. And that's not something you can say every single day. It's intentional. We're taking these steps because we know this industry is going to deliver for Massachusetts. And I'm really pleased to be able to invite the person who's been running point on the, all of this for our team, our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, to say more about it. You're in there somewhere, Rebecca. I am. I got it. It's all good. Thank you. So thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and thank you, Governor, for your leadership on the, in this historic day today that we're very excited about to be here to talk to you about. Um, it's really great to announce the selection of three offshore wind projects that will move Massachusetts forward. Offshore wind is our future, and it's vital that we build that future today. Historically, Massachusetts has been heavily reliant on natural gas that comes to us from pipelines and ships. For decades, our entire region has experienced significant volatility in prices while also worrying about reliability. Massachusetts cannot continue down this path. The reality is we need more power. Offshore wind will bring stability to Massachusetts at a critical time and is the keystone of our clean energy transition. Combined with solar, hydropower, storage, Massachusetts' future promises stability and reliability as our economy continues to grow. By going big now with projects, we're going to lead the nation in the global race for developers, vessels, materials, and expertise. We're going to lock in jobs and technical expertise, and we're going to invest in our ports. Massachusetts is the leader on the clean energy transition. This procurement will keep us there. 
and as the governor mentioned, the benefits have already been uh, started here in Massachusetts. The Salem Port uh, is being constructed with, a, as the governor said, with a historic project labor agreement with a diverse and local workforce. Vineyard Wind, the project that's out on the sea right now, has created thousands of union jobs, double what they committed to. And we just won $389 million to lower the cost of transmission and ensure grid reliability for our region. And $43 million for Barnstable as a transmission community to build a microgrid. There has never been a more important time to act. This past year, Massachusetts was hit with devastating floods, extreme heat, and erosion of our coastline. We have communities with some of the highest asthma rates in the country. Climate change is here. It isn't waiting for us. So we're seizing this opportunity to cut our emissions and deliver clean, homegrown energy to our residents and businesses. So thank you very much. And I have the honor of introducing Elizabeth Mahoney, who is the chair, uh, the commissioner of uh, DOER, who she and her team, who are all here, um, really uh, worked so hard on this over the last eight months or so, and really appreciate all your work. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you, Secretary, and, and thank you, Governor and Lieutenant Governor, uh, for your leadership. The three of you are obviously driving us forward and driving this industry forward. So I'm really excited to share today that Massachusetts selected 1,087 megawatts from the South Coast Wind Project, the entirety of the 791 megawatt New England Wind 1 project, and up to 800 megawatts of the Vineyard Wind 2 project. This is a pivotal selection, the largest ever for Massachusetts and New England, and it represents nearly 20% of our state's total electric demand. It will reduce our carbon emissions, the equivalent of taking over 1 million gasoline-powered cars off the road. This solicitation was built on our previous offshore wind experiences, lessons learned, stakeholder engagement, and we've built it to address the future industry need. We required that projects demonstrate advantageous advantages to environmental justice populations and low-income customers and provide opportunities for diversity, equity, and inclusion in workforce de development. And they delivered. The South Coast Wind Project is expected to provide 3,900 jobs in Massachusetts and Rhode Island and invest in programs that provide training for residents who want to work in the offshore wind industry. It will require suppliers to build relationships with local businesses and will offer resources to support environmental justice and indigenous communities. New England Wind One will create 4,400 jobs and will provide $3 billion of direct economic investment in the region. This includes a project labor agreement for on onshore construction work and the promise of another for offshore construction. Vineyard Wind 2 will generate more than 3,000 job years of employment in Massachusetts and deliver more than $1.5 billion in economic benefits in Massachusetts. Today's selection cements Massachusetts' clean energy transition in that today's selection cements Massachusetts' national leadership in advancing the offshore wind sector and propels us forward even farther. A rising tide lifts all boats, and Massachusetts' clean energy transition is that rising tide. A net zero Massachusetts will not rely on expensive, volatile fossil fuels. It will have thriving a thriving econom economy bolstered by renewable energy, a rise in quality, high paying jobs, cleaner air and healthier lungs, and reduced costs for our families and businesses. Thank you, and I'll turn it back to the governor for questions. Thanks, Commissioner. Um, exciting day for Massachusetts and, and for New England. So we're really proud uh, to be able to make this announcement. Grateful to all the teams who worked hard on this and um, look forward to moving ahead. S any questions? Governor, to, to look at the big picture, maybe use a baseball analogy, what inning are we in in terms of trying to go 100% green or to get our reliance on fossil fuels way yeah. It's a really good question, um, and I welcome uh, the input of the secretary and the commissioner in response. But you know, I think you're right. 
that this is a, a series of innings, quarters, call it what you want. Um, but I think what's important here is that this is right for Massachusetts. I would not be making these investments if I didn't know and believe that this was um, uh, the, the right thing to do for Massachusetts. Look at the space that we occupy here in Massachusetts. You know, we've led on climate for a long time. We've led on establishing goals, targets. They're enshrined in law. Massachusetts, we were the first to sue the, um, I remember George Bush's EPA, to get them to finally regulate greenhouse gases. So we have a history in this space. Um, we have a history of important investments in this space. And one of the reasons that we've leaned so hard into climate technology is the next frontier for Massachusetts. We want to make Massachusetts the global hub of climate technology, as we have done for life sciences, is because so much of the R&D is coming right out of Massachusetts from our incredible research institutions, our incredible colleges and universities. We have so many starters and founders and entrepreneurs in this space. So my money's on Massachusetts. This is the right bet for Massachusetts. These things take time, obviously. Um, and so, you know, your question about where we are is, is a good one. Um, but what's important is we're in the game and we're leading and we're playing on a number of fronts. We're not just playing for offshore wind. As you know, we're proposing to continue to make big investments in solar. We just won that huge award from the Biden-Harris administration, $400 million solar for all. That's a big deal. We're leaning into energy storage capacity um, as well. We've made huge efforts around the nitty gritty, which is the the, the, the restoration, the repair, the building out of a grid, because with all of these sources, nothing is going to happen in terms of powering homes and businesses unless we have a reliable grid. And the team has spent a lot of time focused on that infrastructure. We've also got hydro um, coming as well. So we've got to play on all fronts. Um, but this is important because you know, we are uh, really putting a stake in the ground as we've started it already. I mean, we have we have wind, as you know, off the coast uh, right now that that's powering homes and businesses. This is a really important stake in the ground. And importantly, we're not just acting as a state, we're acting as a region, which is something I think it's a really important for, for us to do as a Northeast uh, region. And one of the reasons I'm also looking forward to spending time with our teams and the Canadian premiers next week as we think about the opportunities for collaboration and partnership in bringing more energy, more power into Massachusetts and the region. But any more thoughts? And uh, you like baseball? I do like baseball. Do you want to? Uh, yes. I, I guess I, I would just add that you know you need to get those first couple hits right. And with this particular industry, in order to grow it and have it be a full time up and down the coast, you got to have somebody who's going to lead, and you got to have somebody who's going to be willing to invest in it. And that's what we're doing. We're investing. New England's investing in this industry so that we can bring offshore wind to this country, and everybody can benefit from it. But you got to have somebody who's going to hit those first balls. Do you know what percentage? It's it's a little it's a little complicated just because it's a we have a regional market so we're buying our electricity from various places, um, but this particular um, projects the projects that we're doing today will will be about twenty percent of Massachusetts load so it's a lot. Well, I didn't mention that because I actually can't mention that right now because it's still the subject of uh, of the bidding process and everything is under uh, disclosure. And for the next couple of weeks, all of those details will be made available. What I can tell you, Bruce, is that all of this, the price, again, the investment here, um, in the evaluation of this, here's a couple of important things to know. We've determined, and it's not just the state, okay, it's independent evaluators, it's utilities coming together, determining that this is a cost-effective way, one of the most affordable ways for us to bring that, bring that power online here in Massachusetts. And I'm confident in that. Um, we'll have more details on that, on that shortly. No, that's not true. We can speak to the process, but we're... I, I can speak to it real quick. Um, so, uh, to, we've done these a couple of times now, as, as you know, and um, what the process is that the utilities will now go to, to negotiate the contracts. 
and when the contracts are filed with the DPU for approval, that's when the prices are disclosed. That's where, how we've done it in the past as well. That's how New York does it. That's how everybody does it. And that's, um, so that, that, will, that will be a, then a public process where everybody will have an opportunity to participate. Well, that's one of the reasons we put the stake in the ground and, and take on not just one, not just two, but three of these projects, which are going to involve the building out of infrastructure onshore, you know, and that is going to include places in Massachusetts, as we've already demonstrated, in Salem and New Bedford. So, you know, that's important. We're really locking in Massachusetts as the, the hub of all this activity. Now, energy will flow throughout the region, um, and, and it needs to, but we're going to make sure that, that Massachusetts residents and businesses are benefiting from from that, including directly through the hookups <clears throat> to the grids right on shore. Given your positive uh, feelings towards this, your enthusiasm for this, mm -hmm. are you going to be pushing now to get more you know, wind power going? We have a large coastline from Plum Island to Fort Lowell. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's great, great opportunity out there and, you know, and necessity more than anything. It's necessity. Look at where we are. You know, we don't have coal fired plants anymore. We don't have gas fired plants anymore. We don't have pipelines. These are not options really for New England. So then what do you look to do? You look at solar, you look at hydro, you look at wind, you look at storage, right? And increasing capacity there. Uh, we continue to push energy efficiency, of course, but you know, this is where we have to go. Um, and the good news is we've had tremendous support from the U.S. Department of Energy. They know this is the now, this is the future. Um, this is what they're providing funding for. And I'm proud that we've been able to, as a team, take advantage of grant opportunities. So we're just going to continue, you know, to, to, to play for all of it um, and, and do it in a way that makes sense for Massachusetts residents and, and businesses. That's you know, we, we've got to look out for the ratepayers, um, and we've got to look out for, you know, economic growth. And economic growth in this state depends on our ability to bring more power online. And that's why we're, we're doing what we're doing. This project got a lot of, this got a lot of local opposition. I mean, it's been difficult every step of the way. It's been expensive, a lot of local opposition. Um, do you think it's going to be that fight all, all along, or are people finally going to just throw up their hands and say, okay, put the powers everywhere? Or you know, there's, I mean, there's, I, look, I think that there's been some opposition, right? We've you've reported on that through, through the years, as with any new um, industry or, or venture. But I have to say, I think uh, this poll's overwhelmingly very strong in Massachusetts. People know, you know, we are a state about a clean energy future. There's a huge economic opportunity for us. People are very supportive of us. And, you know, frankly, that's why you see the legislature passing the laws that they passed uh, around establishing our, our targets around emissions. So, you know, with respect to local issues, we're a team and an administration that works with municipalities working through these issues. We're going to continue to do that. Um, but I think people, you know, you, you don't have to look far to see the severe financial impacts, uh, catastrophic impacts financially of climate change and the need to do the work to reduce emissions and bring cleaner energy online. We, we've got to do this. I welcome any other comments. Is this well? a nuclear park strategy at all? I've, I've read that there are some clean nuclear options and there's some new technologies that could, could be exciting. Yeah. I mean, right now, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. yeah. You know, I think there is some interesting technologies. There's new small modular reactors that I think a lot of states are looking at, and I think it's we're, we're, we're looking at everything, um, and, you know, we're hoping that to see some promise there as well. You know, um, I don't know if they'll do anything today or not, but, you know, my hope is that they buy in at some point. There's certainly, you know, capacity and opportunity for, for, for them to buy in. Um, I'm really pleased to see us working with Rhode Island today, and, you know, I certainly welcome um, Connecticut's involvement. I mean, I, I know it's a good deal for Massachusetts, um, and that's why we're doing it. They could buy in at some point. They haven't as of yet. 
so you have to talk to them more about it. But I know it's a good deal for Massachusetts. It's a good deal for Rhode Island. It's a good deal for the region, um, you know, and, uh, and, that's, and that's what we're, you know, uh, that's why I, I feel very, very confident about this investment. Bruce has got one more. What? So the ports, you said they're all booked up through 2032 or something like that. Uh, New Bedford, who's going into New Bedford to do the staging now? Great. Elizabeth could talk about yeah, that. Commission that. specifics. Yeah. <laughs> so the great news is all three projects are going to be working out of New Bedford. We've got the New Bedford Commerce Marine Terminal and also the build out of the new New Bedford FOSS facility. And then we're really excited that we've also got two projects working in Salem. That's, um, that's been announced previously, but uh, uh, the Avangrid New England Wind 1 project and Vineyard Offshore's Vineyard Wind 2 project are both going to be staging out of Salem as well. So we are firing on both coasts. But the staging for South Coast is out of New Bedford or is it out of Connecticut? Nope. For South Coast, it's going to be out of New Bedford. The, um, uh, the O&M base will be in New Bedford for South Coast. Yeah, O&M. Yep, that's the turbine marshalling is going to happen in New Bedford. Okay. You mentioned Port uh, uh, New London. Is some, one of these projects going to yeah. operate out of there? Not operate, but there's going to be some work done in New London. We need to use Salem, New Bedford, Provport, Providence Port, and New London. But the majority of the work is going to happen at the two uh, Massachusetts ports. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Thanks.